and welcome to the Service and Hospitality Safety Association's Knife Safety Webinar. My name is Lisa Chavity and I'm a safety advisor here at the SHSA. Today we are on location at Prairie Meats in Saskatoon for our webinar. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started today. If you do have any questions throughout the broadcast, please type them into the questions box. We will try and get to you throughout the broadcast, but if we don't catch you, we will email you afterwards. As well, if you're sitting with more than one person at your computer, please type all of your names into the question box just so we can have an accurate read of how many people are watching today. Uh, one last note, this video will be available on our YouTube channel following the broadcast. When most people think of knife injuries, they think of specific cuts to your hand, but it actually can affect your whole body. So to get started, we'd like to show you some stretching videos just to help you get warmed up before you start your shift. And we'll show those videos to you now. Stand tall, feet hip distance apart. Keep your knees soft, chest lifted, back straight and shoulder blades pulled back. Bend slowly, reaching towards the side of the knee. Repeat on the other side. Avoid tipping forwards or backwards. Standing hamstring stretch. This will stretch your hamstring as well as incorporating balance. From a standing position, extend one leg out in front of you, heel on the floor and toe pointing up toward the ceiling. Bending your back leg, support both hands on the back knee and lower back through the hips, keeping your back flat. You'll feel the stretch in the back hamstring of the straight extended leg. Repeat with the other leg in front. I'm going to show you a standing quad stretch, which is a way to stretch the muscles in the front of your thigh here. Uh, tightness in this region commonly causes low back pain as well as knee pain. So the way that you want to do it is if you have difficulty balancing, you can use a chair or countertops, something sturdy to hold on to because you're going to stand on one leg, grab your ankle, keeping your knee pointing straight down towards the floor, you're going to bring your leg up towards your bottom, just like that. You want to make sure that you're not letting your leg come forward, it should stay even with your opposite leg that you're standing on. If you don't feel a stretch getting into this position, Try squeezing your glutes and that will intensify the stretch. You should feel it right in the front of your thigh here is where you should feel the pulling sensation. You want to hold that 30 seconds to a minute and that's your quad stretch. So we just want to take a moment to welcome our special guest, Tim Grabowski. He is the Director of Retail here at Prairie Meats. And I'm going to let him introduce himself and just tell you a little bit about what he does. Well, thank you very much, Lisa. I've devoted the majority of my working career to, uh, to meat cutting. Uh, graduating from high school in 1979, I enrolled in a 21-week retail meat cutting course at SIAS Kelsey. Okay. Upon completion of that course, I was hired by Canada Safeway in Saskatoon. Uh, during my nine-year stint with Safeway, I worked in uh, probably six or seven different stores. And I've been now with Prairie Meats. I'm going into my 29th year. And as wow. you said, currently Director of Retail Operations. Well, that's perfect. So we have our, our expert here today to help us through some knife safety information. So first of all, we're going to show you a few different knives, uh, why they are the right knife for the job, and how to handle them correctly. So Tim's going to help you out with that. Thank you, Lisa. So we have a, uh, quite a wide variety of, of hand tools that we use for cutting, and the majority of them called knives. And one of the biggest issues in using a knife is selection of knife for the proper job. Now, we have different sizes of knives that we use, and basically, you want to be in total control of the knife. Right. And it'd be, it'd be similar to, you have, if you're driving a small car, you have a, a lot of control. If you're driving a big truck, it's less control. So with a knife, you would pick, say, our smallest knife, which would be like a paring knife that a lot of people would have in their kitchen cupboard. 
if you were, say, at home and you were cutting maybe uh, some bacon to make your own homemade bacon bits, or you were cutting some chives for a salad, okay. or trimming some lettuce, you would use a small knife like this. Next, we graduate into what we call a boning knife. And we have two types of boning knives. We have a straight boning knife okay. with a fairly rigid blade. Um, personal preference is really dependent on what the meat cutter would like, whether it would be a straight blade that would be stiffer, or a curved blade which has a little more flex to it. Okay. Both of them are suitable for removing bones from pork legs or boning turkeys or working on any beef cuts. They're also suitable for trimming. So it's really dependent on what the meat cutter chooses. Okay. Um, then we go into what we call, it's a, it's a steak knife, but we call it more of a cubing knife. Now we're using this not for boning because it's larger and we have less control over it. So we're using it for taking medium to larger pieces of meat and cutting them into smaller cubes or if we're trimming on a little larger scale and we need a little more blade. Okay. Then we'll go into a larger steak knife that we'll use for breaking beef, cutting larger pieces of meat, roasts, and it gives us a larger knife capacity okay. to do trimming and cutting. Uh, there is times where we also do use a cleaver if we're cutting some chickens possibly or working with some soft bones and this would be a meat cleaver. Perfect. So you had mentioned and we, we did a little uh, training of this before we are doing the webinar of how to pass a knife correctly. Uh, so for those of you who are watching, uh, we're going to do a little demonstration now of how to pass a knife uh, maybe to your coworker or um, other people that you're working with. Right. Quite often in the workplace we may need a fellow worker to pass us a knife and the one way they can do it is just set it on the table for us to pick it up. But there is, would you like to pick it up Lisa? Sure. Now there, there is a second way of passing it hand to hand. Now you would, you would take the knife and you would put your knife in your hand with the blade facing away and have your fingers back from the blade and your thumb back from the blade holding it quite firmly. You could pass it to your coworker. I'll pass okay. it to Lisa right sure. now. Thank you. And she can grab that knife in any way that she'll grab it from me. There's no way that my hand is in any harm at all. Right. Would you like okay. to pass it back to sure. me, Lisa? So using the same technique that Tim just taught us, I'll pass it back to him. Thank you. Thanks. So now that we know the proper tools to use for the job, uh, would you like to tell us about some of the personal protective equipment that maybe the people who are watching use on a regular basis, or maybe it might be something new that you can teach us? Sure. Um, there, is, um, there is, as I said, numerous knives used for different, different jobs, and there is always the chance of a knife slipping uh, or glancing off a bone. So there's a, a, a couple different kinds of, of protective equipment we wear on our non-knife hand. The first two I'll explain to you, they're made from a product called Kevlar. Now this is a Kevlar glove that a lot of people keep in their tackle boxes when they're filleting their fish. They may use this Kevlar glove. It does two things. It helps you grasp onto what you're working on because it's, it's got a little bit of uh, a bite to the material and a knife will actually glance off. It will not prevent a puncture, but it will prevent ah. a simple knife cut. Okay, that's good to know. Then there is also a arm guard that we wear. When we're, when we're uh, boning, we wear an arm guard, again, made of Kevlar, right. and it just slips on over and protects your forearm. Okay. And what we're doing is we're basically protecting your, your non-knife hand right. in the event that your knife does slip. And, and actually glances uh, across your arm or wrist. Okay. So when we're boning, we're wearing the Kevlar arm sleeve and our meat cutters all wear mesh gloves. Perfect. So that just slips on. Can go under or over. Okay. And snaps into place. So 90% of the, of the knife cuts when a person is boning will be to the fingers, the wrist, and the forearm. Right. So by wearing this, we're protected. You're protecting that whole area. We're protecting area, that really. whole area. Right. It's, it's not that often that you'll get a knife cut above your elbow. Right. So that pretty much gives us protection to do our job. Thank you. 
And as some of you might already know, um, a sharp knife is always safer than a dull knife. So Tim, would you like to show us some different sharpening techniques? I sure can. Uh, just to comment on that, uh, I would think that the majority of, of accidents, uh, I would say it would be from two, two reasons. From, uh, as we mentioned, using the wrong tool for the, for the job right. and using a tool that isn't sharp, using a knife that isn't sharp. So um, sharpening techniques are, are very important and it's, um, it's vital that uh, that you have a sharp knife. It would be no different than a mechanic trying to change a motor in a car with a crescent wrench. It's just not right. possible. And uh, what will happen with a dull knife is, is the, the individual will have to put greater force holding the knife and cutting along the bone and trimming. So the more pressure you're putting on the, on the tip of the knife, if it glances across a bone, it's just going to come at you with a greater right. force. So that's, that's a, 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 for a large part how, the, how some of the cuts happen. All right, so, and you'll show us that sharpening now? Absolutely. Well, Tim, as you had mentioned, a uh, majority of the knife cut injuries that happen are due to dull knives. So you're going to take us through a few different uh, sharpening techniques and give us a little bit of background on that. I sure can. Thank you, Lisa. Um, it's, up to the, it's up to the discretion of, of the knife owner, but one way of having your knife sharpened uh, would be professionally. There's numerous sharpeners throughout Saskatoon and whatever center you're in, and you'll guarantee that you're getting a sharp knife back. Now, for, for what we do at Prairie Meats is our knives are dedicated to our individual meat cutters, and they're responsible for keeping their own knife sharp. And as we said, a dull knife can be very dangerous. So I'll demonstrate a few different sharpening techniques that we've used throughout the years and currently what we're using today. So first of all, I'd like to demonstrate what we call uh, a wet stone. So a wet stone is basically an, an abrasive stone that helps take the edge off of the knife and, and make it true so that you can actually have, have a sharp knife. So to use a wet stone, I'm going to use my mesh glove because of the size of the stone is quite small and I want to ensure that I'm not slipping. So the, the wet stone actually has two grits on it. The first grit that I'll use is a little more coarse. Okay. Then once I'm comfortable with the edge I have on the knife at that point, I'll flip it and, and just touch it up with a finer grip, okay? Sure. So I'm choosing my curved boning knife to sharpen today. Okay. And basically, you'll take the knife and you will keep it on about a 20, 50 to 20 degree angle and pull it back for you, back towards you. So I've done it five sides on this side, five strokes. And five going away. I'll look at the edge. Okay, five more this way. And I'm, I'm ensuring that I'm starting with the heel of the knife and ensuring that the stone touches all the way to the tip with the same angle. Okay, I'm comfortable with that, so I'll wet the stone again, and we'll go to the finer side of the stone, the finer grit. And I'm not using quite as much pressure on as I was with the with the coarser grit. Right. And it's five. So with the coarse one, it, it the coarse one takes the bevel of the edge back slightly okay. and the finer one just hones it up. Okay. If you have a spot in your knife that you're having trouble uh, getting sharp, you can go in a circular motion okay. on this side and then again on that side. So once a knife is sharpened, you've reduced the bevel of the edge back on the knife, creating a sharp edge. Now, one of our tools that we use on a block just to keep the edge up, and this is called a steel, it will not sharpen your knife, but by, by rubbing the knife on the steel, it will just keep that edge touched up. It won't sharpen it, it'll just keep it touched up. And basically what you're doing with the steel is you hold it 
with your fingers and thumb underneath the safety protection and you're taking the knife again with the heel and running it along the steel both sides and you're keeping about the same angle not putting a whole lot of pressure but on a, in a work day when a meat cutter is working in the block, you'll steal your knife probably 40 to 50 times a day. Oh, wow. And okay. sometimes it might be as many as six strokes on the steel. Sometimes it may be significantly more. Okay. okay. So the stone is what we used a number of years ago. Um, from the wet stone, we've graduated up to an emery belt grinder. And it's a similar situation. You have you have an emery belt, which is a, like a gritty sandpaper, okay. and it rotates on a mechanical machine, and you're grinding your knife according to the angle which you set on the, on the sharpener. So if I can just turn this on. So I'll take my same knife, and again, you're using the same angle running it from the heel to the tip. So when you first go to use an emery belt grinder and your knife is quite dull, you'll need to put a little bit more pressure on for it to bring back the bevel of the edge. As you're finishing it off, you will put less pressure. Okay. And again, when you're done, when you're done grinding, uh, just touching, just it, touching up it up with the steel. So we've evolved from the emery belt grinder to another grinder, which is a stone grinder. There's two stones that rotate, and we can adjust the bevel by rotating this dial. Start this up now. This this is um, this is quite simple to use. For it's a matter of you just adjust your bevel and adjust your speed of your wheels. Turn it on. I just need to get some paper towel and ensure my knife is totally dry. If your knife isn't totally dry for this particular sharpener, you get a build up on the wheels and the wheels become oblong so we ensure that, that right. the knife is dry. Okay. So what you're doing is you're taking the tip of the knife and gently putting it in the valley of the two wheels, pushing it back and forth. And again ensuring you're starting at the heel and working right to the tip. So once you've taken your first round on, on the stones and you've pulled back the bevel of the knife, then you adjust the angle and turn the speed down. And you're just going with slight pressure probably 50% of the pressure as you were initially and just running it through in the valley of the stones and you've got an extremely sharp knife. Why we've evolved from the stone to the emery belt grinder to this particular machine is this particular machine is extremely user friendly. Okay. Once you adjust the speed and the bevel, there's three bevels that you can get and there are three different settings. You'll have a knife that'll be sharpened the same as if Lisa did it or right. I did it. So it'd be and consistent for it. Very for consistent everything. and you get a very nice edge on it. Perfect. Then again, when you're, when you're done with the, with the grinder, touching it up. So as you had mentioned, um, there are all of these different techniques and different tools to sharpening a knife. Um, and in your workplace, it might be even different still. So we would always want to make sure that you are uh, getting the proper training and supervision from your supervisor before you're using any of these tools. Definitely. These tools are applicable very much to our business. Right. And there's many people that may be using knives more in a kitchen setting or a cooking setting, yeah. and they may vary. Okay, perfect. So now that we have our nice 
sharp knives. Uh, you did want to mention how they are carried throughout the, the work floor, and I see you do have your scabbard on you. Uh, would you mind giving us a demonstration on that? I'd be happy to do so. So for the most part, our meat cutters carry what we call a scabbard, and this is a scabbard that they are assigned to. Um, it's, uh, it's attached by a by plastic chain to their hip, and it's a safe place to carry your knife. Um, most, most of our meat cutters will have a boning knife, so once it's sharpened and cleaned at the end of the day, it goes into their scabbard, it pushes down and locks into place. Most of our meat cutters will carry a small steak knife or a cubing knife. Okay, perfect. And it fits in there. There, there is the odd occasion where they may have an extra boning knife and it can fit in there also. So what this does is it keeps knives in a safe place, off of the table. It keeps them at, at, the, at the meat cutter's side so they're readily accessible at wherever they're okay. going. Right. And uh, it's just in a safe place, safe, dry, dry environment. Right. And so as you did mention, uh, you are only storing the knives when they are properly cleaned and dried. And we are going to show a few different cleaning techniques as well for you today. Absolutely. And some of these techniques are cleaning that's done throughout the day okay. and some of them at the end of the day and end of the use storage. Right, perfect. I'd like to take this time now just to touch briefly on, uh, on sanitation of our knives. There's uh, different times of the day that we may be working on different, different meat products where we, after we're done that process we may need to go to a sink, wash our knives, sanitize them and get ready for our next project. So basically, uh, we always keep our knives where they're visual. We always need to know where our knives are. We wash our knives uh, with the aid of a sink of hot, soapy water. We'll use a scrub brush. We will use a scrubbing pad. And we'll use a cloth. Now, as I said, we need to ensure that our knives are always very open to eyesight. Uh, one common mistake that can be made from time to time is to take all the dirty knives and put them in a sink of water. Then uh, some people will run the water, put some soap in so you've got suds, and you can't see where your knives are. So that's extremely dangerous. So all your knives need to be exactly where you know where they're at. So what I like to do is I, we wear our mesh glove and we use the scrub brush on our mesh glove hand and I grab the knife and basically using the bristles to get off any of the meat that's left on there, scrubbing the handle, ensuring that you get all of that. Once it's scrubbed, you can give it a quick wipe with a scouring pad, wiping the handle, and you'll notice by wearing my mesh glove, I'm ensuring that there's no chance I can cut myself washing this knife. Then, once that's done, you usually give it a wipe with one of these cloths and give it a rinse. There's two ways of sanitizing a knife and you can have a, a, a sink with a bleach water, percentage of bleach water in and dip it into there and sanitizing it or you can use a spray sanitizer. And for, for a large part we, we do both. This is a spray sanitizer. Once a knife is washed, it can be wiped off with a clean cloth, store it in the scabbard. Well, now that we have all of that great information, we're going to put it to use and show you some more cutting techniques. Tim's already out on the floor, so let's go join him. I'd briefly like to demonstrate the boning of a pork leg. So we're using the knife, handling it in many different ways. You'll notice as I'm sidestepping in the event that the knife was to slip, it, it would not hit my hip. And I'm turning the, uh, turning the pork leg in different ways in order to get the bone out. So there's one bone, that's the hip bone, and we'll pull out the leg bone. And as, as you can see, the use of a sharp knife is very important. So 
So there, we've removed the bone and the pork leg. Next, I'd like to demonstrate cutting instead of with a boning knife, like I did on the pork leg, I'm going to use our small steak knife. I'll just peel it to ensure that we just touch up the edge. Now, I'm, this is a larger piece of meat, so this knife would be a little small, so we're going to use this one. So I'm using this knife to cut through the large muscle. Now that I've cut some steaks, I'll put the, the, the steak knife in my pocket and I'll use a smaller knife for trimming fat. So when we're trimming, we're ensuring that the fat is trimmed uniformly, so it looks nice and even, and all the steaks are cut at the same thickness. So that's strip loin steaks. Now I'll put my boning knife away, and we're going to show you where we've evolved to on a knife called the wizard knife. This is an electric knife, and it basically has a, a rotary blade that rotates and, and cuts through the fat and trims. So it's removing the fat about an eighth of an inch at a time. And you can control it and trim it down where you can get right through right through to the muscle. So that's our wizard knife. And then again, we're wearing our mesh glove and our, our PPE. So that gives you an idea of how we implement all of the, all of the safety aspects of using a knife on a daily basis. So if you'd like to come with me, we'll go through and we'll have a look at some of our meat cutters that are working on the floor in different production lines. Please make note of the mesh gloves. Please, please make note of the, the knife they're using, which is the proper size for the proper job. And all they're cutting and trimming. I would now like to touch on our products that our meat cutters produce on a daily basis. And they're only able to produce these products because they're either starting with a top quality product, they have proper tools, and they're handling their tools properly by keeping them sharp, wearing their protective equipment. Our goal at Prairie Meats is to ensure that our safety procedures are followed so that our staff can come in and work on a daily basis, do the job the way they're supposed to in the best and efficient manner, and most importantly, return safely to their homes in the evening. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity of sharing some of what we do at Prairie Meats and sharing some of our knowledge with you. A big thank you to Tim and the whole team here at Prairie Meats for hosting us today. If you have any further questions, you can email us at info at servicehospitality.com. Make sure you check our website for details on any upcoming episodes. Thank you again, and we hope to see you at future webinars.